and can tell you a little story now about some daredevils who wished that they had studied some physics. These were some folks, about five in total, who were tied to a rope and jumped off the Tampa Bay Bridge. They stood at one side of the suspension bridge, tying themselves to a rope, which was anchored at its other end, at the center of the suspension bridge. The bridge is about 130 meters in height off the water, and they wanted to do a Tarzan-like swing, swinging down over the water and up and over to the other side of the bridge. They brought a strong rope, about something that would be strong enough to support their weight, and at the bottom of the swing it broke and they crashed into the water. They were badly injured. They probably should have studied some physics, as we'll see in a moment. The reason they crashed is entirely understood, using conservation of energy and Newton's laws. If the folks who were jumping started out on this side and were swinging down so that they had some speed down here at this point, and this is where the rope broke, we can look at this path and say it's following circular motion. In the case of what they were trying to do, the length of the rope was about 60 meters so half the height off of the bridge. It was rated to hold their combined mass of about 500 kilograms. In other words, it was rated to hold a tension to about 5,000 newtons, because when I multiply by g, mg is about 5,000 newtons. On the bridge, when they're located up here, the jumpers had a potential energy, mgl, compared to the bottom of the swing. At the bottom of the swing, they lost all of that potential energy, MGL, but it was converted into kinetic energy because they speed up as they fall toward the bottom of the arc. And at the bottom of the arc, they have a speed, V, and are therefore kinetic energy, one-half mv squared. How fast is V? We'll find out momentarily. The other thing to keep in mind is that this is a, a centripetal motion problem. The jumpers are trying to keep moving like a pendulum in a circular path. And whenever there's a circular path, there's a change in velocity vector as the object goes around the arc. And when there's a change in velocity, there's an acceleration. And we call this a centripetal acceleration. We know by Newton's second law that when there's an acceleration A, then mass times acceleration has to equal the net force acting on the object, in this case the jumpers. There are only two forces in this case, the tension in the rope, which at the bottom of the swing is pointing straight up, and gravity, which is always pointing straight down. So if we write Newton's second law, we're going to relate that tension, that gravity, to that centripetal acceleration. Remember that circular motion requires a centripetal force, and centripetal force in this case is going to be provided by the net force, which is due to tension and the gravitational force. We will write that the sum of the forces has to equal ma, or mv squared over r, which is the value for centripetal acceleration. The two forces are minus mg and tension. And then notice the signs. If a is positive, or mass times acceleration, then t has to have the same sign as the acceleration, because it's pointing up It's a vector, just like acceleration is a vector. The gravitational force, mg, has to have a minus sign in front because it points in the other direction, as does t. So how do we estimate this ratio, mv squared over r? Well, we can use conservation of energy. If we go back to conservation of energy and we say it, the kinetic plus the potential energy at the top of the bridge has to equal the kinetic plus the potential energy at the bottom of the swing, and at the top of the bridge, the jumpers initially had no kinetic energy because they started out at rest, but they have a height, L, compared to at the bottom of the swing. Then their potential energy is MgL initially. At the bottom of the swing, they have no more potential energy. They've used that up, but they have a velocity, therefore a kinetic energy, one-half mv squared. This allows us to deduce that mv squared over L is equal to 2mg. L being the radius of the arc that we're swinging through. 
Therefore, in our expression for Newton's laws, we can substitute minus mg plus t is not equal to just mv squared over r, but we'll substitute 2mg, because we just discovered that relationship using conservation of energy. This allows us to solve for the tension in the rope being 3mg, which, if the, the jumpers weighed 5,000 newtons, suddenly becomes 15,000 newtons. It's no surprise, then, if the jumpers bought a rope that was rated to hold their own weight, in other words, 5,000 newtons, that the rope would break at the bottom of the swing, because, in fact, at the bottom of the swing, the tension of the rope would have to equal three times the jumper's weight just to keep the object, them, moving in a circular path. Let's watch now what happened when these folks jumped off the bridge. There's only one way to go, and that's right over the edge. So should I this T minus 10? The plan? Drive to a predetermined spot on the bridge. Attach a 200-foot-long cable to a parked limousine. The five-member stunt squad runs the swing end of the cable to the side of the bridge. Each jumper would attach themselves to the end of the cable and then jump, swinging out like a pendulum. Then release the cable and escape before police, coast guard, and fire department authorities can capture and arrest them all. The stunt required precise execution. The camera crew in the helicopter is ready. The camera crew below the bridge is set. The five daredevils Two, jump. Here we go. So it's funny that we can laugh that the jumpers didn't know enough physics. Uh, the outcome of this is actually quite serious, that two of the, the, the jumpers were actually very badly injured uh, and suffered broken necks as they impacted the water. Let's compute a little bit about how fast they were going. The jumpers hit a, the, speed of the water at a very high speed. We can judge how high that would have been by using conservation of energy. If the, the jumpers went through a potential energy drop of mgl, then that equals the kinetic energy gained, one half mv squared. And we learned that the velocity is the square root of 2gl. This is actually an expression that we would have derived in one dimensional kinematics through a little bit more complicated means, but we saw very quickly using conservation of energy. If l is 60 meters and g is approximately 10 meters per second squared, then our expression is 2 times 10 times 60, take the square root. This comes out to about 35 meters per second, which is approximately 77 miles per hour, which is an incredibly high speed to hit the water. Anyone who's jumped even off of a high jump knows that the water feels pretty hard, and if you're going at a very high speed, like 77 miles per hour, this is pretty much like running into concrete. So the message is pretty don't try this jumping off the Tampa Bay Bridge.